What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week's guest I'm so excited to have join us. Uh, you know him from the Josh Potter Show. Uh, you know him from your mom's house. He opens for Tom Segura. It is my friend, the newest paid regular here at the Comedy Store in L.A., Josh Potter. Thank you. Yay. I think they passed some other people since me, but... What's that? I think, I think they passed some other people since. No, me. just you. Oh, okay. <laughs> just you. I know, but I'm saying, like, I know you. I've known you for a while, and it's just, I was actually in the room when you did right. your you set. You brought me on stage for my I showcase. did bring you on stage. Yes, See, I forgot right. about that, but I do remember you were on stage. Didn't remember it was me, but I remember bringing <laughs> you up. And you had such a funny set because uh, when you are showcasing to get past here as a paid regular, it's like, what, 10, 8, 10 minutes? Uh, I think it was 10, yeah. Yeah, and you get up there and you just bring your A game. Mm -hmm. And I remember, I think in my set, um, I was yelling... Not yelling, but I was there was some <laughs> there was some gay guy in the crowd. And he was being a little chatty, and I had to like shut him up or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then you went up, and then the guy like kept talking. Yes, and the guy next to him was like, "Shut up!" Like in the middle of there was a full on like. <laughs> Gay fight, I think, is what happened. They were <laughs> just a gay on gay crime yeah, yeah. in the crowd, and and you just kept going. You're like, well, okay, that's fine. I mean, that's it happened. They got him out of there. It was kind of kismet. They did kick him out. Oh yeah, because oh. when I I didn't even I knew it happened, but then I didn't know they threw them out until I got outside afterwards, and then I saw the guy out there arguing with like Joe or somebody at the door, and I was like. Oh, they the people inside. They go, yeah. There was like a full on argument during your set. Not physical fight. No argument. Full on verbal <laughs> fight. <laughs> you chatty queen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Um, no, yeah, that was a fun night for sure. Oh, good. And how how is, has your life changed? I mean, I uh, get a couple extra bucks in my pocket. That's yeah. nice. You know, that's about it. <laughs> good. Good. Um, a few more. Well, sets. we have a lot to discuss. I just wanted to. Talk about my weekend real quick. I just went. I just got back from Colorado. Mm. I was with um, Evan, and we went and visited uh, his friend Jen and her boyfriend Sean, and we were in beautiful Erie, Colorado. Erie, Colorado. Erie. E R I E. E R I E. Like Erie, Pennsylvania. But yeah. God, I didn't know they had. And a there's Eerie, also a Colorado. Lafayette, Colorado too, which I was like. Yeah, Colorado just stealing names. It's beautiful. It was, my, it was my first time there. I actually want to get up there and do comedy works sometime if they'll have me. But um, yeah, just visiting uh, beautiful Colorado. The weather was like this. Very like 68 degrees in mm. that. I think it's what, 62 today. But um, went to the Stanley Hotel, which was so awesome. Mm. Uh, a lot of people were like, that's not the Shining Hotel. And I'm like, okay, relax, everyone. It is because Stephen King stayed there for one night in room 217. The Shining Hotel. It's, okay. Yeah. It was based off of the Overlook Hotel. Right, right, right. The right. actual hotel that they use was in, I believe, Oregon. Mm. And then all the interior shots were in like a studio space in England. And so this is based, so this is the outside looks like The Shining? No. Not in the not the actual no that is the the hotel in Oregon okay it looks like the one from the movie the whole story was around oh, right, right, the right, right. the Stanley Hotel mm. in um so uh, none of the aesthetics look the same it just no. the murders happened there for real N well I don't think or it, murders a murders alleged murders something happened it's just a haunted hotel like I you see. know stuff's gone down mm. and like um. Uh, it was built in like 1907. Um, it's in Estes Park, which is, I mean, that's it. And the, and the Stanleys, it's called the Stanley because that's the Stanley Steamer car. Yes. So these guys like invented this car and uh, I did learn a lot about it. They had wine tasting outside. Of course, I'm like, let's go, ghosts mm. and wine. <laughs> and um, they do shows there too, which I would love to like go do a show there and stay there. I want to stay there in the haunted hotel. But, you know, it's just an old hotel. Hotel and in the Gilded Age or the end of the Gilded Age, they would have a uh, high society from New York come to Colorado and stay there, but they Ooh. wouldn't allow the bachelors to stay there with the married couples. So they had to camp out in tents out front. What? And they said, We're not coming back here unless there's a building for us. So they built this like separate building to the side for the bachelors to stay at. So 
Colorado's first gay club opened up that following summer. <laughs> all these like Colorado mountain boys Ooh. just staying in a in a in a hotel together. But what it was, was the really, reason really to cool. keep the bachelors separate? They thought they were gonna get their wives fucked it's or all, something. It's all like etiquette and manners oh. back then. What a time. Yeah. And they'd be like, we can't stay in the same room with unwed women, you know. Interesting. Um, but Stephen King stayed there for one night and he got inspired to write the uh the 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 book the for The Shining. And then Stanley Kubrick took it and kind of bastardized the whole thing. Mm. And Stephen King was like, This isn't the story that I wrote. Right. He, but, he was upset that he made his own movie that was dog shit. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But regardless, still iconic, and it was really, really really nice to like check it out and be that did be you in that see area. any ghosts yeah you know what you did i did you see... said that so matter of factly what i go did you see any ghosts there well you, and you I, go yeah i can feel them <laughs> oh my it's not like i saw them you could did feel I, them I, they're like Ugh. well you could feel like there's like a heavy air you know what i mean like a beetlejuice thing where they took you over not like a uh, <laughs> Not like that. I mean, I wish, but like you can't go upstairs. And like when you see the main stairway up, there's like mirrors and portraits, very like haunted mansion looking of like the people who mm. lived there or was were part of the hotel. But yeah, apparently room the room that Stephen King stayed in, that's where everyone wants to stay. But they changed it for the movie to um, room 237, I believe, which was the As haunted a room. Like, are you a ghost conduit? Do you I love feel like ghosts. they come to you and you they feel don't, like, them all come the time? to me. No, but I mean, like, do you feel? I mean, I say this place is haunted. Do you come in here and you're like, they're all there's one over there. Oh, I'm old news here. They're like, <laughs> oh, they don't pay attention to you anymore. <laughs> they don't care about me anymore. <laughs> they're just like, oh, here he comes. All right, let him let him do his, <laughs> let him do his podcast. You know, hope it gets likes and reviews. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I, I I definitely like checking out stuff because I just remember this hotel. And if it's like old, if it's like over. You know, eighteen thirty and up, like shit's gone down. Do yeah, you know what I mean, this really sweet hotel. Well, I think it it closed and reopened, but there was a ho a hotel in Buffalo that was so nice, and it was built in like an old insane asylum. Work. So it was definitely like you could see the old pictures where they're like wheeling some person down the hall, and they yeah. got straight jackets and everything else. So it's. Everyone's like, oh, you can hear a woman scream if you It's always scream. a woman screaming. Yes. Yeah, it's always like some Victorian girl named Emily. Yep. Like, there's no like modern ghosts. No. I want like a modern, like. Yeah, I want like a ghost that's vaping. Some, yeah, like a vape, like, like, oh, look, there's a mist. It's like, no, that's just a cherry, <laughs> a cherry sour uh, vape yeah. going off in the yeah. corner. Some hipster who was <laughs> yeah. hit by a car. Um, <laughs> All the ghosts today looking at their phones. Yeah, yeah. No one. <laughs> hey, I'm taking a shower. Does anyone, do you want to write in the steam? No. Distracted to yeah. haunt us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it was cool. Colorado was great. But yesterday, uh, beautiful weather. We're packing up. We're ready to go. Um, and I drugged my dog. Mm. Uh, we brought our dog. It was the first time we, we flew with her. Doggy Xanax? Yeah. Doggy yeah, Xanax. You take some of that? Well... It's good. We gave her one, and then we gave her one and a half because we want to make sure she was out. It's like a nice mild Xanax, the doggy Xanax. Oh, it's you took one? Oh, yeah. Like human. I took one as a human. You yes. took one as a human? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My friend was like... Not, not real Xanax. You took dog Xanax. My, I think it was my dad. He was like, I'm getting rid of this dog Xanax. I'll take that. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, don't flush it down the toilet. Yeah, why why yeah, let it go to waste? Nice little mild Xanax. Yeah, it's just going to like... Yeah, you know, smooth me out. He has a big dog though, so if it's a little one, maybe it doesn't even touch. It's just a, just a little one, and and we all of a sudden around three thirty, it started snowing, mm. and we were like, "Well, that's weird." And we saw like the storm clouds rolling in, and it just did not stop. So we get to the to the uh, to the airport. We were flying jet suite back Ooh. to Burbank. I know. <laughs> I didn't know that shit goes to Denver. It was fun. It was, but I mean, the flight out was not good. Mm. Uh, we had to take a shuttle to Denver. Because they couldn't fly us out of uh, the airport, the the jet suite wants to go to the Denver one, and then so we got in a car with like a whole bunch of strangers, and the driver did not talk to us at all. Was there weren't any updates? He was hitting every pothole on the way there. I'm in the last seat with my dog, just like bumping around. He didn't care. She didn't care. Right? No, she was out, just yeah. lethargic. And then three hour delay, and mm -hmm. we get on the plane. And when we get on the plane, I mean, they're like, okay, we're loading the plane for Denver. Your plane's over there. We are running across the runway, getting pelted with snow. This poor woman had a fur on. I just pushed her out of the way. I'm like, <laughs> sorry, lady, you're on your own. Um, 
we get on the flight, you know, we're brushing snow off of us and it kind of hurt. I'm not a big snow guy. I wasn't really around for snow a mm. lot. Um, and um, the most turbulence ever, I was like, this is it. You know, I had a great weekend and this is how I die on La Bamba with my boyfriend and my dog. <laughs> La Bamba. Like this is at La Bamba Airlines and um, <laughs> Richie. Uh, and then we get off the plane and I look at the, at the, in the cockpit and I see like, you know, a captain. And then I see like this young, had to have been like maybe 24 year old, like trainee. The first mate, what do they call it? I don't know, but I was like too young to be here. So, but we made it. Oh, yeah. They're children flying the airplane. Oh, yeah. I was like, who? They have a shortage of pilots and they're like, where? We have children pilots now. Yeah. It used to be some old guy from Vietnam and now it's like a literal like kid who just got off a video game. And it's yeah, like, making TikToks in the cockpit. Like, hey guys, like and subscribe. I'm like, yeah, yeah, this yeah. plane. <laughs> and then I move the flaps to 60 degrees as he's doing a fucking. <laughs> I'm a pilot. Of course I de ice the plane. <laughs> I'm a pilot. Of course I know traffic signals. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, literally got home. We're supposed to get home at like 8 30, got home at midnight, dropped the bags, fell into bed. But the dog started waking up halfway, like not even halfway oh, through the, the flight. Yeah. Because the medication was wearing off. So the dog's like scratching at the like little console thing that she's in. And I'm like, oh, I have to pick her up. The, the dog's like, hung over. Oh, just lethargic, whining. I had to hold her. She fell back asleep, but she wouldn't go back in her bag. And the and the flight attendant was like, she needs to be back in her bag. And I'm like, just just walk. Shut just up. go away. There's 10 people on this plane. Yeah. Um, but we made it back. So that was good. And people were concerned. So thank you for DMing me, letting asking if i'm okay and made it yes I was it. it a boeing yeah. yeah yeah oh okay yeah that's why you were scared about all the shaking because you're like a panel might fall off of here it wasn't uh... even that i would have i would have gladly had a panel fall off mm. or something but it was just it was a lot um but it is spring officially and this week we are experiencing our first full moon of spring oh and it is called the worm moon sounds Weird. Yeah, I wanted a roach moon. Mm, that would have been nice for you, but it's the worm moon the and I, worm a moon. The worm moon. I. You know what? I always think of full moons and I always have like blood moon, harvest moon. Yeah. Corn husk moon. I don't know. It's always something, but I'm like worm moon. I've never heard of such a thing. Well, it is the worm moon, and it is the first full moon of the spring season. And um, it's going to be huge. Everyone's like, tonight is the night. If you're going to manifest, do it during the worm moon. Why? Because it's spring and this is what witches Wait, do. manifest. Oh, okay, manifest. You know, like a yeah, full yeah, moon, yeah. like mm -hmm. to manifest your I dreams. I feel like I've seen this moon already. The worm moon? Yeah, well, this last night was big. It was big, but it wasn't full. Oh, okay. No, tonight is the full worm moon. Why is it called the worm moon? Well, because um, they said it was like... With spring and like rain coming, worms emerge from the ground. Well, yeah. But then they said, no, that's not really it. Um, By the way, I feel like that hasn't happened since 1989, the worms coming out. I remember when I was a little kid, <laughs> the driveway would be littered with worms. Right. Haven't seen a worm in a rain right. since. You're absolutely right. I, where did the worms go? Where did the worms go? Where do broken worms go? <laughs> um, so they said that this, they named it this because the earthworms that appear as the soil warms in the spring, it invites robins and other birds to feed. A true sign of spring. However, more research revealed another explanation. In the 1760s, oh God, here we go, haunted, Captain Jonathan Carver visited the Nadowesi, Dakota, and other Native American tribes and wrote that the name Worm Moon refers to a different sort of, quote, worm beetle larvae which begin to emerge from the thawing bark of trees and other winter hideouts at this time so grubs grubs just call it a grub moon oh i see okay it, so it's any little creepy crawly that's living in the soil no he said it was like the you know those bark grubs ugh gross. Apparently, the moon people were like, we don't want no grubs. A grub is a, <laughs> a, grub is a worm that can't get no love from me. Yeah, I guess they're like, no, we prefer worms over grubs. Yeah, worms so, are a little cooler than grubs. Yeah. yeah. You can't fish. Uh, can I guess you could fish with a grub. I would like a grub moon. A grub moon. <laughs> what a terrible name. Worm, grub. I mean... 
Roach. They could have did it at about anything. Wait, where did you come up with the Roach? I didn't come up with it at all. Christina Pajitsky dubbed me that. The Roach? Day. Yeah, just based off my lifestyle and how I uh, exist. She has, She's like, I don't know how you are alive. <laughs> Well, that's positive reinforcement. Yeah, it's just because I uh, I don't I don't eat very much. I drink Red Bull and smoke cigarettes, and I sleep whenever I can. I guess, mm -hmm. which is not on a regular schedule. And I take cold showers. That's what she also what? thought. But I, not here's the thing: I take a hot shower, but I end it cold. And all these every Tom, Dick, and Harry's doing a fucking cold plunge now. That's all I'm doing without the tub or the ice. Right, it's just cold water. You stand it under it until you can't tolerate it anymore, and then you're done. Is that the Buffalo, New York in you? I don't know. I do like, I hate feeling hot. Mm -hmm. Sweating is my least favorite thing <laughs> in the world. I hate it. <laughs> Out of everything. Out of everything. Anything going on in the world right now, uh, you sweating is just Yeah, I'll take, it goes like genocide. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Hunger, hunger, poverty, famine, me sweating. Yeah, me in that order. To sweat. Yeah. So you literally stand in a cold shower, and she called you the roach because roaches can't be killed. Yeah, and she just assumes that anybody who lives like me would be dead a long time ago. <laughs> we Her need... thoughts, not mine. It's stuck though. Well, but I mean, like, if and when you die, you can haunt. If oh, like, I will. Haunt. I'm haunted by the roach. Roach I'll be King, right down here with all the other ghosts. <laughs> Just smoking and drinking yeah, Red yeah, Bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, let's get to some topics, shall we? Ooh, I Are love you ready? Topics. I'm a big fan of topics. It's good. This one's good. So Sasha Baron Cohen mm. uh, was just called out by Rebel Wilson, and Rebel Wilson called him an asshole mm. in her new memoir. In her memoir? In her, yeah, I know. Did we ask for this? Rebel Wilson deserves a memoir? <laughs> What is the name of this memoir? Do we even know what the... What is it? Does we have a note? Uh, oh, it's called Rebel Rising. Okay. First of all, you missed the mark. It should have been called Rebel Yell. Like, that would have <laughs> yeah, been yeah, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Rebel Wilson, with whom, uh, uh, I guess, uh, Sasha worked with on 2016's The Brothers Grimsby, Grimsby, sorry, identified himself as the previously unnamed asshole she writes about in her upcoming memoir, Rebel Rising. God, she's, this is hard to put together. Upcoming memoir, Rebel Rising. Rebel Rising. That's and hard I to say. I bet that would even be hard to say as a British person. Like, Rebel, Rebel Rising. Rebel Rising. Rebel Rising. <laughs> so Sasha's denying her claim. He says, while we appreciate the importance of speaking out, a spokesperson for the Borat Star told E! News, these demonstrably false claims are directly contradicted by extensive detailed evidence, oh, now it's sounding British, including contemporaneous documents, film footage, and eyewitness accounts from those present before, during, and after the production of The Brothers Grimsby. His denial comes after the Pitch Perfect star called him out on social media. She says, I will not be bullied or silenced by high-priced lawyers or PR crisis managers. Um, that was... The Queen meets Rebel Wilson. Are uh, the allegations that he's an asshole? That's, that's it. it. The asshole that I'm talking about in one chapter of my book is Sasha Baron Cohen. So, so what did he? It doesn't say any details of something that he might have done to get deemed an asshole. It's just being an a calling someone an asshole is completely subjective. Mm -hmm. One what, person may think this person's an asshole. One person may think they're a swell guy. If I had a book for every person that I thought was an asshole, I'd have a whole damn library. It seems odd to come out and have to refute something like that. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes people just need to stay quiet. I'm going to hire a team of lawyers. <laughs> Rebel <laughs> Wilson said I was an asshole. Yeah. All but right. also, like, I, I, I think that's really nice of Sasha Baron Cohen to say, like, okay, I have I have to make a statement. Um, and Rebel says, you want to know why I have a no assholes policy now with people I work with? Well, it's all in the book. Rebel Rising, available for pre-order yeah. now. What a uh, dumb, dumb thing. I have a no assholes policy. Yeah. Oh, do you? But when you say you have a no assholes policy, heads up, you're an asshole. Yeah. Hands down. You're, you're the an asshole. asshole. Yeah. That's the thing. How do you even vet that? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a no asshole policy. Yeah. And you're like, well, okay. I mean, did I take a test? I don't know. I've also seen Rebel Wilson um, on 
social media. She seems difficult <laughs> from what I've gathered. <laughs> How so? I don't know. How she have just you gathered seemed, that Rebel Wilson I just, is difficult? I, uh, I, I see her out there doing her thing, and I go, she is a handful, that one. Mm -hmm. Any lady who got hot? Not even lady. Guy. I would say guy, too. What are you saying? Like, mean, like, is she a, 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 a gender fluid or something? No, what no, no. I'm guy? saying like any lady that got hot or a guy that recently oh, became hot. Right, 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 right. You yes. know, you can you can let out your inner asshole now because I feel right. like you can get away with a little bit yes. more. She came on the scene as everyone. Everyone's like, oh, she's fun. The fat friend or whatever. And then she got hot. And now she's like, I'm going to take back all of that. And I'm going to be rebel, an asshole. I'm going to be an asshole, yeah. but I have a no assholes policy. Right. You can't be an asshole here. I can only be an asshole outward. Yeah. So uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. She she has a healthy lifestyle. It's also bizarre to get hot after you get famous for not being hot. <laughs> the irony. Like, why would you do that? You feel like you're ruining your... What got you here? You know, so, dance with a girl that brung you. So <laughs> so you're saying that, like, she's... she. I mean, she, I think she's allowed... She can do whatever she wants, but I'm saying to get roles and all that, it's like, hey, we want that. Oh, you mean like roles in movies? Yeah, not like, like we want roles. that lady. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Not R-O-L-L-S. No, 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 no. It's like, we want that lady from, I don't know what the fuck movie she was in that first Bridesmaids. One. Bridesmaids, that's yeah. what it was. She was like with the brother or whatever. Yeah, I want that lady in the movie, and then they get her, and it's like, what happened? You're hot now. You know what? You're being an asshole, and I have a no assholes policy. All right, gotcha. My bad. Yep, that's it. That's the that's the the catch twenty two. All right, go try and be hot. I guess we just need to go back to simpler times. You know, sure. Let's feel old, shall we? Oh God, the Breakfast Every Club. Day I feel bad. Took place forty years ago. I'm still <sighs> slightly younger than the Breakfast Club. Me too. Thank God. I always wanted to go to go to high school during that time, though. What, the 80s? Yes. <laughs> well, I feel like it's kind of wild because somebody posted a picture of it. And they said, you know, it was the date. It was March. I want to say it was like March 24th, mm. 1984. It was the day that they all went to like, um, what's it called? Detention. Uh, detention. <laughs> I forgot the word detention. It was more like an uh, in-school suspension. They had to come on Saturday. They had to go on a Saturday. I mean, still one of the most iconic teen movies of all time. You want to keep screwing around? You're going to lose your scholarship. Fine. <laughs> Wait, what was what I was saying? You got another day, pal. Good. That's oh, another that's one another for one. you. Great. You want, to, you want the bull, you get the horns. Oh, yes. Now, who would you identify as in, in the movie? Oh, my God. I want to say that I would identify as, what's his name, Judd uh, Nelson? Judd, yeah, uh, yeah, Judd Nelson. I would love to be like, yeah, I'm Judd Nelson, but I'm one million percent Anthony Michael Hall. Oh, well, that's okay. In high school, especially. That's okay. I feel like, I mean, this movie, it had, I mean, if you're not familiar with it, directed by John Hughes, uh, brought out the 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 teens of the era. I mean, we had Ali Sheedy, Judd Nelson, Emilio Estevez, uh, Anthony Michael Hall, and uh, the one and the only Molly Ringwald. And Anthony Michael Hall, by the way, the reason I am also him is because at the end, they kind of pair up and basically are dating or fucking or something like as they leave. And Anthony Michael Hall is the only one that isn't. And he has to write like a letter. He writes the letter for like all of them. He's like, we're all a loser. Yeah, they make him, they still make him do the homework. Yeah. Well, they also gave Ali Sheedy a makeover, which nobody wanted. Yeah. I don't know she... how you get a makeover in detention with like no... Like well, resources. Molly Ringwald had all the resources like in her locker or whatever. Maybe, I I didn't think about that, but she had that weird headband that always just threw me off. And then he's like, "Oh, I notice you now that you're hot." Yeah, like Rebel Wilson. It was a real. She's Do you all think Ali Sheedy had a no assholes policy because <laughs> I felt like Judd Nelson was the asshole. Well, it was funny. I mean, she was like drawing pictures and making it snow with her dandruff. I mean, they gave her like a whole shower and everything in there. Yeah, that which I guess she goes makeup. to the gym and gets a shower. And then all of a sudden, Emilio Estevez is like, this girl, where did she come from? Oh, I'm the all-American jock. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to make my dad proud. Yeah. Yeah, and then Molly Ringwald was the princess. I thought it was crazy that they smoked weed in there. And they were all like, it is kind of the one big unifier weed 
everyone really nowadays but we it was all like know 80s it, weed. but it was the 80s 80s weed and it was so crazy how quickly they all were like i'm gonna smoke weed now yeah you know what i mean like they were like nervous remember the jock is like don't do it oh yeah Emilio so, Estevez is like don't do it and then even the nerdy anthony michael hall's like i'm gonna get high well he had nothing to lose right because he was what like he was like the picked on kid right but i remember in high school dude i i didn't smoke weed in high school and if somebody would have proposed that, I would have gotten so freaked out. I would have been like, we're going to get in trouble. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It would have been great to blaze up the library at school. That's crazy. <laughs> well, there's nobody there. Well, the, the principal was roaming around. I mean, this was this might have been as like been the prequel to Lord of the Flies. Like, mm. you put a bunch of teens in a, a space for the day, let them go wild. Never happened now, I'll tell you that. Didn't they get on the intercom and they were like, attention, did it, didn't they do that, or am I making that No, up? I mean, the principal was there, but he was just, like, being a lazy guy. He doesn't want to be there on Saturday either. So he's, like, in his office. He's walking around. He's kind yeah, of putzing what, around. That was and the shit. real story. What's the principal doing? And then he would hear them getting into mischief, and he'd go and run down the hall, remember? they play mm -hmm. that Wang Chung song, mm -hmm. Fire in the Twilight. <laughs> God, that was such a good movie. And then at the end, ha, 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 ha. Uh, great soundtrack. Great soundtrack. 40 Best years. Of all time. 40 years. Yeah, now it's the uh, the Senior Citizen Breakfast Club when it, discount. Well, it's still a movie that came out before I was born, so I'm not like as thrown off my axis from that being 40 years. When it's like 10 Things I Hate About You hits like 40 years or something like that, that's when I start to go, I'm in, I have one foot in the grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember 10 Things I Hate About You. Oh, like it was yesterday. Or like She's All That or one of those, you know? Yeah. Those are going to start being like... I had um, Carney on last week, Carney Wilson from mm. Wilson Phillips, and she was. we were talking about 90s con, and that was the big, like, the harsh reality of you see, like, the cast of Sabrina the Teenage Witch and Seventh Heaven and Step by Step and TGIF and all this other stuff, these other shows, and then you see, like, the cast reuniting after X amount of years, and you're like... Ooh. Yeah. The guy who played Eddie in Family Matters. Yeah. You're like, oh, what happened to him? He's yeah. like 90s con. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but like they're also just like, you haven't seen him in a while. So they're yeah. older. And you're That's like, like when I was, uh, I don't know, when I was in my 20s, I'd go to the world's largest disco and it'd be like Barry Williams from the Brady Bunch is there. And Barry I'd be Williams like, will oh, never all turn down shit. a disco. Oh, sure. None of those people will. But then you see him and you're like, oh, I can't even recognize you. Right. But speaking of being unrecognizable, Bruce Springsteen uh, returns to the stage looking unrecognizable. Ugh. Wait for it. And a little bit like Tilda Swinton. I mean, wow, what a jab. What a jab. Whoa. Whoa, are we sure it's not Conan O'Brien? Oh. oh, but see, now they're... This Why does is he some have shady, tits? Why this does is he some got shady huge. journalism. It says Bruce Springsteen or now Ellen DeGeneres. So we're comparing him to Tilda and Ellen... I, poor Tilda Swinton catching strays. I don't even know. I don't know if Ellen deserves it either, but. Yeah. Can it just be Bruce Springsteen looks unrecognizable? We don't have to compare Bruce Springsteen to somebody. He does look like an old hag now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Say old hag, not yeah, yeah, yeah. Tilda Swinton. You don't need to give specifics. Yeah. Just say an old. Yeah. An old tree grub. You right. know, what are those cans on him though? He's, he's got, got some jugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. What Bruce, the, what's that about? Those are the the jugs of Philadelphia. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> dressed in a half buttoned red flannel. Oh, I'm God. hard and I dark jeans. Tits. The Born to Run musician, <laughs> 74, returned to touring in Phoenix, Arizona, on Tuesday after postponing shows due to his peptic ulcer disease. Oh boy. Yeah, those are. Um, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Just harsh. Poor Ellen. You He's know? got bigger tits than Ellen, though. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Look, oh, Springsteen's once toned, ouch, and tanned upper body appeared paler than usual, and he rocked stark white hair and a rather pallid complexion. That'd be a wild Bruce Springsteen song. He's like, I'm going through transition after my factory job i retired from the line now i'm using my medicare to yeah i mean <laughs> bruce springsteen did go from looking like the boss to the assistant manager now um it is pretty intense and i love that one person just said that's tilda swinton and the new york post was like he's right 
Tilda Swinton. That's all I'm, we need for verification. Uh, I mean, one commenter says one Tilda commenter Swinton. said this, and everyone's like, "Yes, print it." I mean, look at him. He's seventy-four. He looks fine. But let's go back to his tits again. Yeah, the cleavage. It looks like he's oh. busting out of that shirt. I mean, when you crop the head, just crop, crop. Yeah, yeah. That's like a chick's body. No, a a not... toned up, strong one. I would. You would as a as a a man. Yeah. As a woman, I'd be like, "Who's that strong lady?" <laughs> But it's not even in the arms. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's not in the arms. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it's, you know, okay. Then I wouldn't. Yeah. But Ladies and gentlemen, Bruce Springsteen back in the day, though? Absolutely. Back in the day? Sure, I get it. Yeah. But you know what? This is why I have a zero asshole policy. Mm. Because I just feel like just let... Oh, now I, I'm throwing it out the window oh, because no. JoJo C was in the news. I thought you had a zero asshole policy. Yeah, no. Now now I, it's back on. Jo you hate this lady. I don't hate her. <laughs> I feel like I... She's a subject of ire. Yeah. And I feel like people are now getting on board with it and being like, you know what? Justin's right. Mm. It's not like, you know... We're allowed to have opinions on stuff. This is, you know, we just talk about the stories that are in the news and our opinions on it. We're not mm. trying to, like, hate on people, whatever. It's just fun. And I like connecting with my friends about these topics. And JoJo Siwa is just one of those. <sighs> After seeing that Bruce Springsteen picture, JoJo Siwa could beat the shit out of Bruce Springsteen. Absolutely. Did 100%. you see her on the the that Black Force Reality. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Picking up Tom Sandoval and she's running saved, in the snow. She's got Dr. Drew over one shoulder. Yeah. She's got, she's saving I got everyone. You guys, come on, let's go. Yeah, she's like I mean, Forrest Gump in the fucking she, nom scene. Yeah, JoJo Siwa has turned from, you know, dance mom baby to like full on like babes in the dirt, you know, motorcycle, mm. Thunderdome, lesbian brigade. She's wearing leather gloves. She's got like a full on arm sleeve tattoo. Nice. I'm kind of digging that. Yeah. She's actually, I think, going to be the lead bike in Dykes on Bikes for this year's <laughs> gay pride parade. Like she's, hey, y'all, it's me, Jojo Siva. <laughs> like she is just on a strict diet of pixie sticks and crack. If she lived in my hometown, she'd be great at roller derby. Oh, absolutely. Yes. She'd be one of those girls. Just like pushing and they shoving. Call her, and then here comes Sludge Bucket or whatever their names are. They have all those gross <laughs> names. Not Sludge Bucket. Holly Rockets. Yeah, it's something. Strawberry pound cake yeah, or yeah, something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, they have like, those dumb names. Lemon no chill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Straight no chaser. Key lime die. Something like that. Key lime that. die. Something like that. So this is the story that popped up. Uh, Jojo Siwa, who is about to turn 21. Uh, calm down, listeners. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> she has, says that she has already lined up a sperm donor for her future kids ahead of her 21st birthday. Which, here's another one of those stories. Girl, just keep it to yourself. Nobody cares. Um, she was asked at the 35th Annual Glad Media Awards in LA last week um, that she is very excited about wanting to become a mom in the future. And she says, spoiler alert, I got a sperm donor. I can't wait to have kids. I'm going to have lots of kids. One day I want to have a great little family. I got three kids' names picked out. Ready for them, Freddie, Eddie, and Teddy. No shit. That's disgusting. I mean, she should all she should be like minority report. She should get like precogs <laughs> of CPS to arrest her because yeah. she hasn't even had the kids yet. But No, but the names are picked out. Yeah. So ladies looking for love, get ready because JoJo's got the names picked out. A social worker should just be following her. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie, Eddie, and Teddy. Oh my God. So she said, she yes, she, she's got three arm tattoos dedicated to her future little ones. What? That's psychotic. <laughs> Which she clarified will come in a couple of years. She doesn't have a, a girlfriend or anything either that no. she wants to share this with. She just wants no. to like get Did the jizz up inside her. And what yeah. do you mean? Just waking up to that every morning. Hey, come on, we're gonna make eggs. Some, know, some, some lady probably likes it. Oh uh, yeah, you but, know, um, ladies. 
Despite her plans to form a family, Jojo Siwa is not thought to be in a serious relationship at the moment. Uh. After coming out as gay in 2021, she publicly dated Kylie Pru and influencer Avery Cyrus. Is that Miley's uh, sibling? No. No. Uh, the Dance Moms alum previously credited Jenna Dewan and Demi Lovato for helping her realize she is attracted to women. So, well, Demi Lovato, that? this is on you! <laughs> Demi Lovato finger or something to get her to do it, or what? How did they do that? <laughs> Thank you for knowing the pronouns, but Demi's back to she. Oh, okay. Yeah, but good for you. I'm glad you at least attempted. Yeah, I tried, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. How would, how does one, that's actually a really good question. Like I it, realized I like, was gay. Thanks, Demi Lovato. I'd be like, I need to know that story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. Jenna Dewan did a really great magic mic number when she was on Lip Sync Battle. She recalled in 2022 TikTok rap she created. I pretty much watched it every day. Little me, she didn't know she was gay. As for Lovato, who came out as pansexual, Siwa said that her song Cool for the Summer was instrumental in her gay awakening. Furthermore, she said she thought she might be gay when she was grossed out by the thought of having sex with her first boyfriend. <laughs> well, boy, oh boy, who the hell is that guy? Golly. His name was actually Josh Potter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No! That's so wild to be that guy, just to be like, what? yeah, my ex-girlfriend was JoJo Siwa. They're like, oh, really? I thought she was gay. He goes, she wasn't at that time. I kind of nudged her along. Is that the guy? Oh, no. No, that's her girlfriend. That's 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 Avery Cyrus. That's Avery Cyrus. Mm. Yeah, that's her boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now that dog would have had better luck. So it's it's just really interesting. I, I I feel like this would be a giant red flag if you're ever dating JoJo Siwa. It's like she's fertile, guys. She's ready. She's 21. She's ready to breed. Yeah. Anybody who like, well, I guess like if you're in a regular sort of like hetero thing where you're going to make a baby potentially or that's in the cards or something. If anybody has the names picked out and everything predetermined before you're even introduced into the picture, that's pretty wild. But this is what JoJo is. It's always been a branding thing. It's always like she makes the decisions, the YouTube videos, the like content. It's this generation where they're like, no, like, like I couldn't imagine... Being in a relationship with Jojo Siwa, probably because I would never be able to sleep, and <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd probably just Jojo sleeps with her eyes open. Actually, she just doesn't ever rest. But being like, oh, you know, we're expecting a new little one. I was thinking about the name Hannah. No, it's Eddie, <laughs> Teddy, or Freddie. Yeah, what if it's I've a girl? I've had this set up for years. The worm moon is full. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, she sprouted wings and flew away. <laughs> That's abuse. I mean, to name your children that and have it rhyme, mm -hmm. it's abuse. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Well, let's play a little game. Easter is around the corner. Uh, hopefully everyone takes is away it? Jojo Siwa's candy um, <laughs> because it's mating season. Yeah. Easter is this Sunday. What? I know. This Sunday? Yeah. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. Are you a big Easter person? No. I mean, there's nothing I'm going to... nothing. It's really the most innocuous holiday in my life. I just like now I have to remember that for the bank on Monday. I mean, <laughs> I got to get all my deposits well, in. I got to, I better get my Don't rent. Don't let Jojo check. see what here, you. Oh, a deposit. God. I'm fertile. Yeah. Get out of here, Jojo. Beat it. I'll see you next for moon. <laughs> yeah. She's literally Jeepers Creepers every 24 years. She's a <laughs> tall lady, too. Yeah. She's like a tall one. She's a tall one. She could throw me around pretty good. Yeah. 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 If you're into that. Yeah. I, I might be, but not. Yeah. We have different energy. We're at different energies, ends of the energy spectrum here. Yeah. I get that. And that's yeah. fair. You can have that difference. Um, but here's the top 10 Easter candies in the United States based on DoorDash sales data, which I don't even know if that's a real thing. DoorDash well, that's, yeah, that's sales pretty, data. That's a weird place to collect data about the candy. And also, if you're getting candy delivered to your door from DoorDash, get out more. <laughs> yeah. Get alive. Socialize. Join a group of people and uh, do things together. We're, we got a lot more candidates for my 600-pound life because of DoorDash, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I got to hook up my oxygen tank and the DoorDash candy guy's coming. Now they can deliver it to the window? Oh, oh, God. Well, number 10, we'll start with number 10 is the Ferrero Rocher Fine Hazelnut Chocolates Easter Bunny. 
that's crazy that that's 10. Oh, you, you would think it would well, be Well, I guess higher? that would be more of a Valentine candy, right? <gasps> oh, interesting. I no, I th I think here this one needs to be 10. Peeps Marshmallow Chicks Candy. Send it to hell. Yeah, I don't, need, I don't do peeps. Oh, there is nothing worse than look. I get, I gag looking at peeps in their containers. I, I'll tell you this. I'm not a big candy guy uh -huh. in general. I think it's like some people are like, I love. Candy. Yeah, you ever have a just a person that's obsessed with, like, ooh Skittles or whatever? And I'm just like, grow up. You're an adult person. Oh, like if it's in a green room or something. Oh, oh my, my god. god! If they have like a, a wonderful comedy clubs, uh, Bricktown and like Tacoma and all these, they always have those like coffee tables you could see through, and there's just like a plethora of candy. It would be like Macaulay Culkin would come in there in Home Alone and be like, whoa, it'd be like his <laughs> fantasy. And I'm always like, I'm almost 40. I don't really give a shit about yeah. candy. But you should see some of these idiots that go in there and they're like, wow, greatest comedy club ever with all the candy. Uh, You're like, no. what are you talking about? I would lock the doors, douse it in gasoline and light it. Yeah. Like there's no, there's oh, like a, just adults getting excited over candy. It grosses me out. It makes me just, <laughs> it does, I can't take you seriously just anymore. It grosses you out. I'm just, it Whoa, gives me. look at all these strawberries. <laughs> we're, we're, it look gives at all these me the pink ick. starbursts. Whoa, <laughs> yeah. they don't have the red ones. Whoa. It gives yeah. me the ultimate ick. Yeah. No, peeps give me the ultimate ick. Okay. Oh, and now they make flavors well like what oh there was like i think there was like a dr pepper flavor there was like i think they make they they're attempting to do like every flavor of peep mm -mm. and i don't agree with it just crawl in a grave i remember putting my peeps in the microwave to watch them explode well that's fun that's because i hated it that's just good american fun <laughs> Putting shit your, in the microwave. Your marshmallow chickens on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, number eight was the Dove Milk Chocolate Easter Eggs. This is actually my favorite, I think. Whoa. I you, Whoa! Know what I, you, know, you know what? I, I don't like that they, I don't like when they manipulate the candy to make it the different shape. Yeah. Like the Reese's Egg one, too. I know that might come up in the list. Mm hmm. Doesn't taste like a regular Reese's cup. No, it does not. It actually tastes off. Something about it. Yeah. Uh, number seven, the Lint Milk Chocolate Bunny. I think this is just traditional milk chocolate bunny. Not a big milk chocolate the fan. The Lint? L-I-N-D-T. Oh, like yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. like the brand of, yeah, it's those, the, the, I think the ones that are like hollow. Yes. You know, like rabbits should be. Could you imagine if it was solid? Remember the solid one too? Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, that was too much. What? How, I mean, how long is this going to last? I'm not a big milk chocolate. I like dark chocolate and that's it. Yeah, really? no, I'm not wanna... a chocolate guy. Uh, number six was Gallery Value Jelly Beans Filled Egg. No. Yikes. Yikes. Jelly Bean Filled Egg. Oh, oh that's like... just got a bunch of jelly beans. What's your favorite color of jelly bean? I'm not going to... You're not going to like it. I'm black. I'm black too. Yeah. <gasps> it's the Yes, best. high five. It tastes like ouzo. I, I know. Yeah. If you don't know what ouzo is, it's a Greek... Uh, the liqueur. liqueur tastes like je black jelly beans. It actually does. <laughs> You're the only person that I've ever known who likes black jelly beans. My father's Greek, and he used when we were teething, he used to rub ouzo on our gums. So I think I have like a a licorice aficionado. Or... Yeah, but I don't like black licorice. There's something different about it. Yeah, it's just the, I don't know what it is. The black jelly bean was always my go-to. But I don't like red licorice. I don't like black licorice. Weirdly enough, but you like the black jelly beans. Yes, it tastes different. It's a little, got a little more like... An actual black licorice? Oh, I see. Because, well, real black licorice has that like, like a bitterness to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I don't like that. Me neither. But like red licorice, red vines, Twizzlers. Right. Ugh, right. No thanks. I don't care about that either. No. But wow, yeah. Black jelly beans. Yes. We're in the club. Very rare. Um, number five, Snickers, Twix, Milky Way, and more assorted Easter chocolate candy bulk variety pack. Make up your mind. Yeah, they just threw all of the rest in Make up in your there. mind. That's crazy. This is number five. Oh, a bulk variety. Every candy bar? Yeah, figure it out. Number four, Hershey's Kisses Milk Chocolate Candy Share Pack. Um, okay. Just Hershey's Kisses? I mean, yeah. isn't that, it's all, it's this, it's just a different vehicle than the chocolate bunny. It's the same thing. Milk it's the chocolate. same thing, but you can like pass it around and be like, you want to kiss? They're really <laughs> like. Uh, number three, Starburst. Jelly Beans Original. The Starburst Jelly Beans can get fucked. <laughs> Those are dog shit. I don't agree with them either. 
they're just like nonsense flavors. They're like, mm, they're kind of like Starburst. But I don't know. I like Jelly Bellies. Yes, I want the one. Do you ever have the ones that are like, it was kind of before Harry Potter made the gross flavors, you know, like where they were like, this tastes like a booger or whatever. Yeah. You know? They used to make ones that would be like, Jelly Belly would be like popcorn. Or popcorn, like, jelly beans, rock. Oh my God. They'd make crazy ones where you'd eat them and then you'd be like, I can't believe this is in a jelly bean. What is mm -hmm. this? What am I eating? Space food right now. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. It would be like it would be like blueberry pie. Yes. Or uh, uh, like a root beer float. Yeah, those were good. Those were good. And then Harry Potter was like, here's one that tastes like cat vomit. A diaper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're like, hey, can you guys pass me some diaper jelly beans? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you uh, might get a disgusting one. Here's grass. Yeah, this tastes like homeless underwear. Yeah. <laughs> mm, thanks. Thanks, Harry Potter. Uh, number two is Cadbury cream egg milk chocolate Easter candy. Now... I can't tell you the last time I had a Cadbury cream egg. Last don't, Easter? I don't quite remember. I don't No, definitely not. I couldn't, I can't remember an Easter since I was a child. I don't like the idea of an egg looking material coming out of chocolate. I always thought it was cool, but you're like, what is that? I don't want it. Yeah. And it was like, like cream. Uh, I don't want like a cream in my chocolate. Mm. You know who does? Who? Jojo Siwa. Yeah. Really? She's ready. She's Just ready. Slurp it out. Uh, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I will say props to this commercial for, I think, being 50 years old. Oh, they're like, 50 that's years how we old. know it's fucking Easter time. What, it's just, it's it's pretty much like the oldest cinematography at this point. All this, those animals are dead. <laughs> They've what? all died. The yeah, lion. The lion. He's been dead for 10 years. I always loved the... Um, the gay one. I'm trying to remember what the animal was, but it was the... <laughs> like a goose or something? I think it was a llama or it could have been... It was something. It was like... <laughs> well, it was like queen. Um, and number one, Reese's milk chocolate peanut butter egg candy. It's a classic, but it's... Anytime you put a Reese's, a Reese's or whatever in a shape, an egg, a tree, a heart... <laughs> It ruins it. I Did think. you guys do Easter egg hunts? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My mom loves a holiday. Yeah. So we did the hunts. We did the basket search. She'd get into that. My baskets were always cool, though. She'd put, like, video games in there or something. Oh, so. that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't get that. You know what I did get? Um, an egg hunt one Easter where I found an egg, and it was in a water... <laughs> um, what is it called? Where you... Like, in the front yard, we... In Texas, we had these. I don't know, but you, like pull it out and the sprinklers are down there. You can mm. turn the sprinklers on in the ground. Okay. And there were like, there's eggs down in there and I reached down in there and my hand was stung by uh, scorpions. Oh my God. Because there was a scorpion nest in there. Texas and fucking nuts. <laughs> to this day, I'm thinking, was I set up by a family member? They were like, Justin, go get the eggs in the, oh my in the God. thing. And I'm like, yeah, thanks. I'm going to pull one of the, <laughs> putting one of the eggs in the scorpion. And I had my whole hand was just swollen. And I looked down and there was a, and I'm going to be gross here. There was a giant scorpion with like a hundred scorpion babies on its no. back. Just, oh my yep. Lord. And you just got your whole hand stung. Mm -hmm. But oh. you know what? It was for Jesus that day. <laughs> you know, it really was. All right. Well, we got we got some more stories. Let's move it along. My favorite Easter bunny, Shania Twain, has responded to Lucas Gage apologizing for, quote, wasting her time with Chris Appleton wedding. Are you familiar with Lucas Gage and Chris Appleton? Not. Okay. At all. But I know Shania Twain. Yeah, we know Shania Twain. Well, these two... Okay, Lucas Gage, he was on White Lotus. Uh, he was also in, uh, God, he was in uh, You, the li the latest season of You okay. on Netflix. Um, well. Is he the one on the left or the right? Exactly. And I'll give you $100 if you can guess which one is Lucas Gage. Left? Correct. Okay. I'll yeah. have them PayPal you after this <laughs> podcast. Yeah. So Lucas Gage is the one on the left. Uh, Chris and he Appleton. He married Chris Appleton. He married Chris Appleton. And Chris Appleton is a celebrity hairstylist. He does like, uh, he's famous for doing Kim Kardashian's hair. Mm. So he also has like a hairline and all this stuff. But uh, Shania Twain. Uh, had the most epic message for the White Lotus alum, Lucas Gage, who recently issued an open apology to Shania for wasting her time by having her perform at him 
and Chris Appleton's Las Vegas wedding last April, only for them to break up seven months later. Will she get paid? Yeah, I would think. Well, then what the fuck are we talking about, Shania? Well, just let... He said, I'm sorry for wasting your time. And then Shania, this is the problem. Just shut up. <laughs> just shut up. You don't have to say shit. And things go away. And Shania responded with, in true Shania form, if you're not in it for love, I'm out of here. <laughs> that's how Shania Twain responded. Which to... song is that? I mean, that's just a funny LOL. Well, but... no, it's, it's one of her songs. I don't remember that one. Yeah. Uh, so she responded with that and she, she married them with, uh, um, what was the song? I can't remember it off the top. Still the one. Oh, you're still the one I'll run no, that one. to. Yeah. The one, one that, that I belong to. to. You're still the one I kiss. Good night. What was the other one? Well, what she should have said or what she should have sung during this wedding is, so what? You're Kim Kardashian's hairstylist. That don't impress me much. Bum, bum, bana, so yeah. Yeah, I, that would have been great. Did she do, I can feel you breathe? That's Faith Hill. Damn it. How dare you? That's what I thought, actually. How dare you? This Yankee coming into my podcast telling me what Faith Hill and Shania Twain is. Um, no, but yeah, around that same time. Um, he said that uh, the divorce was probably, the or th that wedding was probably the biggest waste of her time. She also had her La Las Vegas residency at that time. And uh, oh, So you pop down and do a couple numbers and get paid a bag? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, but that wasn't the only regret Lucas had about his nuptials with the celebrity hairstylist who enlisted his friend Kim Kardashian to officiate the ceremony. Acknowledging that the Kardashian star flew the couple out to Vegas, Lucas sheepishly said, yeah, sorry to Kim and Shania. That's oh. not a big flex for Kim to fly them out to Vegas from where, L.A.? Probably. Calabasas. I could have done, done that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I I think this is just a. Uh, I think we need to let Lucas Gage know that the world is still spinning. And did I tell you? I don't. I don't know if I mentioned this on this podcast that I was in line at CVS uh, getting a prescription, and Lucas Gage was in front of me. Oh my god! And he was picking up a prescription, and I was like, "That's penicillin." <laughs> it was like right out. It was like right after his breakup too, and I was like, "I bet that's like for a flare up." I don't know. Maybe he's he's getting back out there. Maybe he's well. Definitely, I don't want that a little prep action. You know. You yeah, know. I don't want the 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 gauge to be caged. Right. You know, he needs to fly free. Good Ooh. for him. Uh, Lisa Rinna claims that the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills made her a better actor. She was on there. <laughs> exactly. I remember. <laughs> I remember her from like TV and stuff, but I never you remember watched from it. TV. Yeah, yeah. Like Lisa. what? Ah, Christ! What was she in? <laughs> I don't know. She was in a bunch of stuff in the nineties. Wasn't was she? she? <laughs> Am I wrong? Alexa, was Lisa Rinna in stuff in the 90s? <laughs> what she was, was she well, in? She was on a soap opera. She was on... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uh, my mom used to watch that oh, show. Wasn't she like don't the tell bitch Lisa Rinna a, that. Wasn't she like the bitch in a soap opera? Yeah, she was Billy on Days of Our Lives. Yeah. Yeah. No, she was a babe, too. Yeah. Well, she still is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's gone from... Days of Our Lives. She was on Melrose Place. I think she yes. did. Yes. You remember her from Melrose Place? Yes. Really? Not really, but sort of. I uh, mean, just like on that time frame. Yeah, the 90s. Yeah. yeah. Veronica Mars. I'll tell you this. If you would have said Lee Serena and then said she was on a Housewife show, I would have never. Oh, she did eight seasons of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I have, I've never seen one of those. Really? Before, so. a any of the franchises? Nothing. At all? Not a one. She said during an appearance of the Jennifer Hudson show that she's grateful of the experience she had on the Bravo reality show, adding, I think it's made me a better actor because I'm acting again. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. She explained that her time as a housewife came in handy while working on her latest project, working with those women, going through that experience. I just did a movie called Mommy Meanest, which I trained for for eight years on that show. <laughs> wow. I definitely did that, and I had a lot to pull from. I have a lot to pull from after working for eight years on that show. Different psychologies of different women. I never would have come across that if I had done that show. Lisa Renna is Mommy Meanest. That's kind of hot. 
But also, what is it? What's the show? I want to know. So it took you eight years of training to do a, a movie called Mommy Meanest? Yeah, she was probably training with her children. Oh, well, she did. She Raising did. them. Her kids are like models now. Oh, really? Well, you know. Yeah. Like, here's a couple. Instagram models. Thousand dollars. Like, my daughter wants to walk the Versace show. I okay. see, I see, I see. Yeah. Um, How about Jennifer Hudson having a show? Yeah. Pretty wild. She's good at it. She is good at it. She's good at it's it. It's one that I would never have seen coming. Exactly. From from American Idol, but like her and Kelly Clarkson having yep. two like banger shows. I love Kelly Clarkson. I do too. I'd marry Kelly Clarkson in a heartbeat. I would too. Kelly Clarkson is just, she's just a cool chick. Yeah. She, and she's, oh my God, when she does like, I don't know, she just does karaoke. Kelly Oki. Kelly Oki. Yeah. Oh my God, she's like, so good at it. She She's just like that girl that just like, Loves onion dip and farting. I want to just go drink with her. That's so funny. Onion dip and farting. That's not, I mean, I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> what am I? Why did that come out? <laughs> that, that, that's your idea of like, I get a, it. it's endearing. Of like a good woman. <laughs> that's not what all of us are looking for. In not, a, a, <laughs> not, not, a, not a good mom or like. She's <laughs> what <laughs> like just a good Texas girl. She likes buffalo wings, sweet tea, and farting and onion dip. I mean, we could do without the farting, maybe, but if you like onion dip, that's okay. But I just feel like I could get a, a beer with her and she'd be chill. That's what I mean. Yeah, I, I, I get it. You were that was your version. Dip and farting, yeah, yeah, but I yeah. meant beer. <laughs> I'm gonna scale it back and just say she'd be fun to get a few beers with. Yeah. She's a cool chick. You know, I, I think I just saw this picture of Honey Boo Boo and thought onion dip and farting. I turned my head over here and I looked at it myself and yeah. I thought, and I, I, no wonder I, he got that conjured like, that image. Like Honey Boo Boo as a Warshock test would be, like if I saw Honey Boo Boo, would be like onion dip and farting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And they're like, well, okay. Uh, Honey Boo Boo's <laughs> not messing around. She is, it's time to lawyer up Mama June. She uh -oh. threatens her mom with court. Wait, are these two... On the television somewhere still? I think so. How I mean, do they, they come just, across TMZ still? It's it's just, they just pop up every now and then. I know she graduated high school. Uh, Mama June is in a show called Family Crisis. What? Um, yeah. Is it, wait, Mama June's got some JoJo CY action going on here? She, She's, yeah. She had a she, glow up? Well, it wasn't, she did like coke, right? Wasn't it? She, <laughs> she, like, she did like some drugs or something. And she lost all this weight, and then she got like a whole bunch of plastic surgery, you know. Um, and she didn't wait for Ozempic. No, she did not. But here's the thing: she, this this uh, new episode, uh, Mama June. Is it Mama June? Who was on Dancing with the Stars? Honey, Honey Boo Boo was. She was on Dancing with the Stars Junior, and she's like, "Where's my real? Uh, where's my uh, Dancing with the Stars money?" And um, they sat down to have a money-related discussion on Mama June family crisis, with June handing over checks for her daughter, Alana, better known as Honey Boo Boo. The small amount of money that Honey Boo Boo receives shocked Mama's daughters who interrogate her about it before eventually admitting that she spent some cash on cost of living expenses like clothes and food. Um, the That certainly upset her daughter, who says in a confessional that she may need to consider legal action against her own mother, adding she feels June stolen from her. It seems like Alana's fed up with her mom because this isn't the first time they've quarreled over cash. Uh, it is pretty sad. Uh, this is what kind of Taylor's oldest time where yep. the parents get involved with their kids' uh, finances. Um, I just finished that movie, Quiet, or that series quiet on set oh god Ooh. i haven't watched it yet i don't need my childhood ruined i oh. guess it's not gonna ruin my childhood as much as it did the i mean it childhood is childhood of the people in the it show is, but yeah fair <laughs> it is interesting though and i'm gonna talk about it on my patreon but like it is it's it's kind of wild because there was that time of kids getting um uh, kind of divorced from their parents. Yeah. You know, where they were like, get out of here, Drew Barrymore. And we thought it was it. crazy, but it, it makes complete sense. Macaulay Culkin. Emancipation. Huh? It's emancipation. called emancipation. Emancipation. Yeah. Thank you. That getting emancipated from your family. Amanda Bynes did it. Um, uh, so many these child stars did it because they were just like, I want to do things on my own. I want to go against like the child labor laws of Hollywood. Did the Olsons do that? The twins? I think 
I mm, thought they did something. Maybe they might have done something. I'm not sure. Because they were like 40 when they were like 10, I feel like. The old they were, yeah, old souls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Couldn't imagine dating one of those. No. I mean, let's see. I'm the same age as the old. Yeah, they did. They cut their parent. Uh, the Olsen twins cut their parents out of their business in 2004. 2004. That yeah. means they were 18 almost. Yeah, but they've been smoking since they were two. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it is it is kind of wild because you look at these child stars now, and you know either they're dead or fucked up or have all this emotional trauma and baggage like Drake Bell is in the docuseries which is insane mm -hmm. and they just talk about like like Nickelodeon and Disney being at the top of you know every 90s early 2000s kid and then you like find out like what it was really like and you're like god and they're asking you know they ask these actors now who are on all that and um, uh, victorious and uh, uh, the Amanda show and they're like well if would you let your kids get into Hollywood and they're like absolutely not mm -hmm. it yeah. is wild it is crazy you have to watch it though it's only like four episodes how many shows do we gotta watch for children get fucked I mean it's just <laughs> I'm so inundated constantly with these documentaries I know I gotta hear about their bee holes getting licked and you're like I I get it I get it. Yeah. The kids were fucked. It's awful. Yeah. I don't need to see it. Yeah. It's a new worm moon. We need to move on. We really need to move on. Put the yeah. past behind us. But it is good. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend Quiet on Set. <laughs> really good. Um, here's a story. Gwyneth Paltrow says, fuck you to Bill Clinton for falling asleep and snoring during her Emma screening. He's an old man. I know. And also Gwyneth's like, what? He was the president for eight years. He's tired. He's an exhausted, sleepy, misogynistic All man. All the pussy he's fucked. Let the man let sleep. Let the man sleep. So she gets on the hot ones um, because they had a slow week that week. I'm surprised that she ate chicken wings no she has some goop nuggets or something oh, I, was gonna I don't say, know yeah, yeah. her her she's just dipping her nuggets balls smell into... like her vag <laughs> tofu yeah. balls in the yeah. hot sauce she had her own her her goop <laughs> nuggets the nuggets um Gwyneth Paltrow had some choice words for President Bill Clinton after he <laughs> fell asleep during her hit film Emma on the hot war on the hot ones this past week she uh, was asked about the rumor that Clinton actually passed out of sleep during a screening at the White House she said true he he was snoring right in front of me. I was like, wow, I guess this is going to be a real hit movie. But it was. So fuck you, Bill Clinton. Oh, my God. To what? where Bill Clinton replied. He could always oh, like, what? I, I What'd she wait. say? I can't wait to get in that ammo screening so I can take a fucking nap. But also, <laughs> but also what do you think? Do you think Bill Clinton's going to sit through a Jane Austen flick? No, he wants to flick a Jane Austen. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't want to. He probably, before he fell asleep, he's like, we, we going to see any titties in this thing? Yeah. And then they were like, yeah. no, it's Jane Austen. He goes, oh, well, I'm going to take a little bit of a snooze. Yeah. <laughs> we don't see any of those Paltrow titties. All right, I'm going to check out. <laughs> but leave it to Gwyneth. Like, Excuse me, sir. Can you wake up, please? This is my movie. Mr. President. No. <laughs> uh, when was that movie made? He was in the White House? Yeah, so it he was like, even, it wasn't the premiere. It was they did a screening of Emma. Wait, at so the he White was House. the president at the time? Yeah. Oh my God, get off it! He was the president. Yeah. He couldn't wait to get in a dark room and take a nap for an hour and a half. Exactly. It's not like he was not the president anymore. And I want to play this game with any other. Um, if you have a a grandfather or an uncle of a certain age, do this: lower the lights and yeah. pop on Emma. And let's play a game of how long does Peepaw stay awake? <laughs> it's probably the first time he sat still all day. <laughs> and some oh. of you might have to put a mirror under their nose to see if yeah. they actually aren't sleeping during the Emma movie. Oh, we're going to watch this with people. I can't get blown during it. <laughs> all right, I'm going to take a little nap. God. I hope she doesn't get yellow fever by the end of the film. <laughs> Uh, speaking of yellow fever, Chick-fil-A announces that it will no longer serve antibiotic-free chicken. How are you feeling? What does that mean? Well, <laughs> it is it is a worm moon. So they said that starting this spring, citing supply reasons in an update uh, shared Thursday to maintain the supply of the high-quality chicken you expect from us. 
Okay. Chick-fil-A <laughs> will shift from no antibiotics ever, N-A-E, to no antibiotics important to human medicine, N-A-I-H-M, starting in the spring of 2024. So what? According to Chick-fil-A, N-A-E means no antibiotics of any kind were used in the raising of the animal, while N-A-I-H-M restricts the use of those antibiotics that are important to human medicine and commonly used to treat people and allows use of animal antibiotics only if the animal and those around it were to become sick. So it's styrofoam now. I don't, I mean, we're just eating whatever the fuck is put. I mean, are they even real chickens or are they just in a coop? Yeah. They're a just black they're, coop shitting on each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're just all stepping on each other and pooping on yeah. each other. It's they got got like six legs and, yeah. and four tits, four breasts. Food's oh. over. But do they look like Bruce Springsteen's? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh. If that's the Juicy. case, I'll get a yeah, that sandwich right there. That double like patty a, of it right there. Yeah, that looks like Bruce Springsteen's tit right there. So <laughs> mm. wow. I've never noticed that that Bruce Springsteen's tits look like Chick-fil-A. Uh, what are they, sandwiches? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck. I mean, I I don't know. Food's over. Here's the thing. Sure, they've changed their recipe, but hate still tastes like hate. <laughs> what if that's what it was? They're like, <laughs> well, this antibiotic isn't for gay people. What if their sandwiches now made you gay? Yeah, 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 yeah. The old ones did. That's why we're switching them. The old ones, they, they made you a little bit homophobic. <laughs> but these ones, get ready for pride season because dicks <laughs> will be out. Um, and, that, and then you see the cows on the ladder, like, painting the signs that say, <laughs> dicks are out, Chick-fil-A. Um, as we look to the future, the availability of high-quality chicken that meets our rigid rigid standards become a concern. The change enables us to not only ensure we can continue to serve high quality chicken, but also chicken that still meets the expectations our customers count on us to deliver. A Chick-fil-A spokesperson told Fox News Digital in a statement. This is bullshit. You know who needs to make this statement? Have you seen the Chick-fil-A girl? No. On TikTok. Who's the Chick-fil-A girl? I have no idea, but she is a legend. She's an icon, and she is the moment. Is she, like, really into eating it? Or no, is she, she hot and advertising no, it's not it? like a fetish thing. Okay, is it a mukbang? Does she eat it with her feet? Ugh. It's no, a Chick-fil-A mukbang? She is this girl, and I think she worked at a Chick-fil-A, um, but she is all... Her name's Gina Lynn, and I am obsessed with her. She's... Uh, she just... She went... Okay, she was a TikTok person that blew up overnight because it was like the right video. The algorithm went wild. And she does this video, and it's right here. I just want everyone to know. If you're on TikTok, you've probably seen her. Can I also have barbecue sauce? Or do you have like a buffalo sauce? <laughs> no Chick-fil-A sauce? No Chick-fil-A sauce. So you want a barbecue sauce? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then you want... It's it. That's it. <laughs> it's, it's this face here. She does. Yeah, she does this. She goes, I lemonade. And then she does the like, gung, gung, gung. And it's been duetted. It's been stitched all over. And that's her now. I'm sure she's got like an OnlyFans. This, like this is the dragon we're all chasing, this algorithm. <laughs> Kill me, dude. I can't do it anymore. I just wanted to write jokes and go on stage. And now this is what I have to do. <laughs> be one of these fucks oh my god <laughs> this poor girl she doesn't even know she's a thing she's just like she knows she's her a life. thing now i'm sure she's making her, her, so much money her sister took the video her oh, oh her sister took the video okay so now i feel a little duped because i thought it was just some rando who was just like oh my god and at first everyone was like oh my god she's on drugs she's tweaking at work but no she's like no, no she's, i just I, well, she's like i'm a weirdo and whatever it, now she's putting out like thirst traps and i know that's cool. now she's like i'm a bad girl with chick-fil-a sauce oh. and she's dating charlie hugh them or whatever the yeah, fuck probably yeah, or something. Yeah. You know? She's dating probably like I'm dating the Chick-fil-A girl. Oh, oh. And here come down the red carpet the Chick-fil-A girl. <laughs> <laughs> Which also uh will be a horse at the Kentucky yeah. Derby this year. And here come down in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the float of the Chick-fil-A girl. <laughs> On the Veterans of Pearl Harbor float, <laughs> yeah. we have the Chick-fil-A girl. Eliminate. <laughs> <laughs> I love it though. Um, and also, we just th this is our final story. Uh, we have 
here are the places where people win the lottery the most. We just had like uh, a $2 million lottery. There was one here in Southern California in Sun Valley. Whoa. Did you know that? That's where I, near where I live. I know. Damn. Yeah, I know. I was going to ask if it was you, but... I don't play the lottery. Okay. I gamble. I don't Do you either. think I would? I, I have friends who are like, I got to stop in and get a lotto ticket. And I'm like... Well, yeah, I have a concern what? for those people. But you're mad at me if I like black jelly beans? Yeah. But no, you're I, like, I got to go get a scratcher before the day's over? I don't know why sports betting feels like an educated <sighs> way to gamble your money, but like that just feels like slot machines. Well, I mean, it really is. But the number of lottery jackpot winners by state. So California has 46. New York has 45. Uh, I'm sorry. New York has 55. This is just population based. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like, you know. The bigger states have the most winners. Texas has 16, Florida 21. What's U.S. Virgin on? Islands, zero. Wow. What's going on in Mississippi? Mississippi, zero. zero. What is the states that are pink? Are they uh, no data? Does that mean it's illegal to lottery there? I don't know. Nevada, I mean, you would think Nevada would have. Like, I don't think Nevada has a lottery because of all the gambling. So maybe Utah. Totally Utah's pulled Mormon. that out of my ass. No Utah, Utah probably doesn't have gambling. Uh, what is next? What is that? Alabama? Alabama. Alabama has none. Um, so, yeah, I thought that was interesting. Um, but, yeah, they have, it just reminded me of the guy who won the lottery like a couple years ago who like went ape shit and like sh was like, this is who I am, like revealed himself and then bought like a house and then like another house the next week. He's just well, people who win the lottery either get like murdered. Yeah. Or something happens to them. So, so a lot of people don't even like reveal themselves. It's actually like you you get like if you win, you get to say whether or not you want to be revealed as the winner. Because some people like obviously they'll be like, that's my third cousin. I'm going to go fucking kill him. Yeah. They owe me some money. Yeah. yeah they yeah. owe me a Ferrari. What would you would you stay like on the DL? No, that's the problem. Oh, I get murdered. Josh. I mean, the money would be gone before I even got it. <laughs> I'd be he so bought bad. all the cigarettes and Red Bull in the state. Oh, they would be like, you know, you don't get all the money at once. And I'd be like, <laughs> shit. Oh, God. And then, I'm, and then I'm in debt. Uh, I already spent What it. would be your first purchase? Some dumb shit, dude. I, I, if I, I don't even make that much money. Like two years ago, I made more money than I ever made. And I would just buy things online. Yeah. Like whatever, any impulse. I'd be like, I don't care. I'm rich. And I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't rich you're at like, all. <laughs> you're like one of those. You're like the Chick Fil A girl. You're like, I got money. <laughs> Y'all don't know me. <laughs> I paid off all my debt and then immediately made more. Like <laughs> made so much more. <clears throat> well, you know, to each their own. Everyone's different. Yeah. I don't know what I would do if I won the lottery. I'd probably buy a house. I'd probably buy a house. In a foreign land. I'd buy one in Buffalo, New York. Like I said, a foreign yeah, yeah, land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah What probably, foreign land? France or some shit? I don't know. Like an island. Oh, okay. Like a, like a really nice like getaway. Caicos and Turks or whatever the hell? Yeah, something like that. Somewhere I could finally tell Jojo Siwa that I was the sperm donor. <laughs> And let her just oh, get a reaction on camera and then put it on TikTok and become the new Have you donated girl. sperm? No. You I was can. asked. You, well, I mean, I just mean at like a clinic. You'd be allowed. I could never. I When I first moved here, <laughs> I tried. Why would I be allowed? You're tall. Go on. That's all it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's I mean, it. I think there's other tests too, like drugs and everything else. But like, I was like, I, I want to donate plasma or whatever the hell. Because I was poor when I first moved here. I'm like, wonder if I could donate. My jizz, and then it turns out there's a height requirement that I don't meet. <gasps> there's a jizz height requirement? Yeah, they don't want any short ass babies. Wow, it's crazy. It's crazy. Isn't and it's kind like of fucked up. Height profiling? Is it called eugenics? That's what I thought it was. Wow, called. we don't want no short. Yeah, I, what short are you going to say men. next? We don't want any brown babies. Oh too? wow, what's next? When does it end? Where? Does it end? What Where's is the, the height requirement? Do you remember? I think it's like 5'8 or something. What are you? 5'5. Five, five. Get off my podcast. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. No, I look. You're not 5'5, five, five, really? I might be shorter. 
Well, you're like five eight in heels. Yeah. So yeah. So that's good. That's why I'm gonna walk in with some platforms. Yeah, or just like a nice stiletto. And then they're gonna be like, the rest of you is also a reason you can't give jizz. <laughs> you can jizz in this cup all you want. We're not <laughs> we're not gonna give you money for it. We'll leave you alone for a minute, but then like l turn the lights off Actually, and lock the door. Yeah, you you owe us money for using the room to jerk off, frankly. <laughs> that cup costs yeah, twenty five yeah, cents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just leave a quarter by I mean, just do whatever you want. Do you know anybody who's done it though? It's actually I have, very yeah. like sterile yeah. and they're like here's a porno mag like it's a fucking 1982 or some shit i know i i yes there were there were like magazines in there i know that that he did use those but like yeah i, I i'd be like i'm good <laughs> just pull out your phone i'll use my hey, phone uh, can you go recycle those i'm gonna i'm gonna I got a come couple... to a magazine like i'm in the colonial days yeah i mean what the fuck are we talking about <laughs> I don't need to look at these cave etchings <laughs> yeah. while I'm getting my my spunk on. Uh. Oh, well, Josh, thank you so much for being here. Did you Thanks have for fun? having me? I had a great time. Good, always. I'm glad. Make sure to check out his show. Please plug away the uh, oh, Josh yes. Potter show. Josh Potter show comes out every Wednesday. Uh, I'm on uh, the Your Mom's House channel with Behind the Jeans. If you're a Your Mom's House fan, it's all about the Your Mom's House universe that comes oh. out every Thursday and it streams live on Wednesday. And, uh, you know, I'm going all around the world, not really, just around America, and I'll be in Alabama where they have no, no lottery, gambling. no lottery, unfortunately, so yeah. come see me in Huntsville end of April, and then in May, I'm all over the road, so thejoshpotter.com, check it are, out. Are you going to be in, are you, is that with Tom? You're no, I'm by myself. Oh, that's on your own. All on my yeah. lonesome. I'm going to hopefully see them in Austin in June. Oh, nice. So I hope to, to see them out I think there. I might be with Tom later in the year, but okay. we'll find out. All right, perfect. Well, make sure to check Josh out wherever you can. And thank you, as always, to watching and liking and subscribing and listening. The thumbs up. We appreciate you here at the Just Saying Podcast, and we will catch you next time. Happy Easter. Y'all be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.